Hey, what's up? Andrew Kramer here, and welcome to another very exciting tutorial for our new plugin, Element 3D. And we're gonna be taking a look at animating inside of Element. So there's a lot of cool ways to animate from the basics up to the advanced animation engine. So it's gonna be a lot of fun, and uh, hopefully you guys will understand how this plugin works, and uh, we'll just take it uh, project by project. So uh, before we go on though, let me just give everyone who hasn't seen the plugin a quick overview of how it works and then we'll dive right in. Let's take a look at how this plugin works. Basically, it's a particle array system that uses real 3D objects. So you can see I'm flying around real 3D geometry with textures and I can move around the AE lighting, make some cool adjustments, and it's all done right inside of After Effects. Plus, it uses our fast OpenGL renderer that we custom built for this plugin. So you can see this is 720p. So the way it works is Element has its own scene setup. We've built our own custom interface. It allows you to import 3D models, OBJ, and Cinema 4D files. This is just a little preview that allows us to uh, see what things look like. We can uh, preview our models right inside of here. We can adjust our materials. So we have texture mapping, we have uh, reflection, refraction mapping, we have an environment control here. And this is, uh, is really nice for being able to change the look of the reflections and uh, your scene. And we also have a preset material library that allows you to basically get started and just you know apply materials to different objects. And you can of course go in and edit those settings as well. We'll go ahead and close out, cancel this. Now, let's talk about the basic array settings. So, each group is made up of a particle replicator, a particle look, and the utility to allow you to copy, paste, and reset each group. So, the particle look, we can control the size and uh, rotation of the particles, etc. some random rotation as well. And then we have the particle replicator which allows you to turn up the particle amount. You can also change the shape of the replicator. So in this case, we're just using a sphere. There's also some primitive shapes like this ring. Not to mention, you can use an actual 3D object as the array. So um, I can help maybe visualize that. If I were to go to the output here, change the polygon mode to point cloud, we can actually see what each vertex looks like and so what would happen is particles would be emitted at each point so kind of a cool thing and this mode can actually be rendered so you could do some really cool stuff with this point cloud mode and while we're here we can actually change this to wireframe mode so you could do some really cool looking stuff um, you know it's got the fog so it's uh, it's very interesting um, you can set it to be a flat color so if you don't want the wireframe to be shaded like this. You could do some really cool stuff, but this is already a very interesting look that you could build upon. Um, so let's switch that back to normal. It's getting a little crazy. Let's switch this back to a sphere, and let's talk a little bit more about animating a group. Now keep in mind, all of these properties are animatable. So I can take the scale and you know maybe turn it down to zero and you know do some kind of animation where everything grows out. We can even go to the particle look. Let's keyframe the rotation random. So if I set a keyframe, go to the beginning here, maybe turn that off and set the orientation to fixed. What's gonna happen is they're gonna sort of explode out of a single object. So something cool about that. There's also some random options like surface offset and scatter that allows you just to do some interesting things with the particles when you have a lot of them. So that's the basics of animating each of the groups. All right, so let's move on to some more advanced animation capabilities. All right, let's take a look at animating some moving parts like this. So we have a gun that's shooting and then we have the shell casing popping out. And uh, how can we animate something like this? Well. Let me show you. So, I want you to pay attention, okay? Listen, hey, hey, pay attention. Pay attention. Uh, no. 
Um, here we are looking at this gun model and let's take a look at animating the gun. So I'm going to jump inside the scene setup and I've got the gun already in my scene. So here it is over here, 45 millimeter handgun. And by the way, it's part of the projectile weapons pack that's uh, going to be available. Now, the cool thing about this model is that the inside of the pieces are actually created, meaning if I shut off some of these materials, we can actually see the inside of the gun and enough of the parts are here that will allow us to animate. So we'll shut this back on. Now, what are these four materials? Well, basically, these are the materials that have been assigned inside of a 3D program. So we've taken each of the different parts like the trigger and the slide and we've separated them by material. An element automatically recognizes them. So what's nice about that is it allows us to separate parts of a model so that we can animate them individually. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to shut off the slide and then I'm going to duplicate the model. Then I'm going to shut everything else off on this model except the slide. So we have the slide on the top and we have the gun on the bottom. Now what I need to do is assign the slide, this part, to group number two. So we'll click on group two and then we'll uncheck group one. So now if I hit OK, the model looks exactly the same. There's no change really except now if I go to group two where there wasn't anything before, now I can actually animate that top piece independently from the other piece. So that's basically the answer. We can go in here, we can animate this piece, and now we've got our animation. So very, very cool, very fast, and we can do up to five different parts using this method. We could come back inside here, and I've got this uh, shell casing, that uh, inside of this demo model. This is also part of the projectile weapons pack. And I can say put this on channel 3, hit OK. Now it's a separate model so it's going to come in at the normalized size. So all objects get normalized to about the same size. And then we can just go to the particle look, size it down and uh, move it around, animate it. We could connect it to a null object and basically just have it shooting out all right, so this is one way to be able to animate multiple parts of a single object. But let's keep going and take a look at some even more advanced examples. All right, let's take a look at some visual effects examples. So here I have this uh, background image of some helicopters and I thought, well, I want to add my own helicopter. So I did. This helicopter is being rendered inside of the Element Render Engine and uh, it looks pretty dang good. So the way it's been set up is I've imported it and I just have three lights. So I have a fill light, I have the sunlight, and then I just have an ambient light. And uh, it's looking really, uh, really good. So if I shut the motion blur off here, we can take a look at how this is set up. So you can see the propeller blades are rotating. So I guess maybe I need to keep the motion blur on. We can see the propeller blades are rotating and the object is also being able to be moved around. Now remember, Element only allows you to import static 3D objects. So all of the rigging for the helicopter has been done right inside of Element. So let's take a look at that right now. So we've got this helicopter, it's fully three dimensional and uh, we even have a couple of little pilots in there. I saw the uh, pilots in the back, you could kind of see them a little bit so I just threw in some pilots. Uh, really fast. All right, let's take a look at how it's set up. So we'll jump into the scene here. We've got this Black Hawk helicopter and you'll see that it's 100,000 polygons and it uh, doesn't seem to slow down a bit. Now keep in mind that this is a high quality model and uh, you know a lot of work was put into this but what this shows is that Element can handle this many polygons and some high resolution textures. So it's definitely capable of doing some good looking stuff. Now, this particular model is not assigned to any group, it just happens to be all together. What I've actually done is similar to the gun example, is I've taken it and broken it into parts. So the Blackhawk body is on group one, the rear propeller 
is on group number two and the top is on group three. And then there's just a pilot helmet that's on group five. And I'll show you how uh, that's set up as well. So I've basically broken each of the pieces up and then using the different groups, let's see here. I've added some simple expressions to animate them over time. So a uh, little time times a there, I can just delete that really quick and we can see this basically animates that and this one animates the top rotor. So very cool and it's all rigged, but it's also rotating around. So if we look at the gun example really quick, watch what happens when I try to rotate one of the groups. The pieces don't stay together. So how did we solve this? Well, we have a world transform. The world transform takes all of the groups and allows you to move them around however you want. So in this case, we can move all of the propeller animation. So it's uh, perfectly animating and we can move this whole thing around. We can, we can animate it banking and rotating and diving into uh, the ocean or whatever we want to do. It's fast and uh, you know it's, it's a really simple system. Now what's really cool about it is that let's say on one of the groups we put a building that we wanted it to crash into. Well, we can do an exclude group. So we could say exclude group five that might have a building and that way only the parts of the helicopter will actually move together. So really handy feature, we hope you guys like that one. Um, lastly, let's just take a look at the uh, the pilots here. So they're on group five here. So what I did is I just set the replicator to a 3D grid and it's set to two people. So we could set set it to three people and now we've got three people in the cabin. Maybe we set it up to like six people. We've got six pilots in there or one pilot and five co-pilots. Sounds like a plan. All right, we've got a little bit of time. So let's take a look at this watch example and uh, just disregard that horrible uh, joke. Um, this is a cool looking model. This was rendered inside of Element. Now, I know what you're thinking. That's a really cool looking watch, but I'd really like to see inside of it. All right, so this was created in Element. All right, so in this example, we're gonna talk about 3D object dispersion or being able to disassemble a 3D object. So we'll come over here to this watch comp and uh, I'll just go and purge all so that we can actually see how fast uh, this renders. So if I just take my uh, camera, move it around, I would say it, uh, it renders pretty fast. And this is 720p again. And I can scrub through the uh, video and we can see the animation. So the rendering is uh, still very fast even with this on. Now, how does it work? Basically, if you have a 3D object that's made up of multiple pieces like these gears, Element will automatically create particles out of those pieces and allow you to distribute them in 3D space. So let's take a look at how that's set up. So we'll jump inside of Element. All right, so here we have our luxury watch and I've shut off parts of the model so that I can assign just the wrist part of the watch to group two and the top part with all the gears to group one. And that way I can animate them independently. Now remember, all of these inside pieces are all separate individual parts. So if we take a look at Cinema 4D, you can see all of these different pieces are separate objects. So what's going on here is the top piece is on group two and the pieces are on group one. Let's go and hit okay. All right, so now the question is, how do we animate these multiple pieces inside of Element? Well, let me just delete the keyframes and we can kind of start from scratch. So the top piece is here on group number one. So what I'm gonna do is go into the particle look and there's a folder called multi-object. So this is probably one of my favorite features. So if we enable this, we have a bunch of independent settings specifically for the multi-object. So we can do things like scatter the pieces we can uh, turn up the random rotation. We can even do a random size on each of the pieces, which uh, can be really cool. Now, in this case, we might do something similar to a scatter, 
but on a single axis. So I can, instead of scattering everywhere, we can scatter just on the Y axis. So that's kind of cool. Now a scatter is like a random movement, but a displace is more of a spatial movement. So if we go to the displace X, Y, Z and bring that up, we're going to go ahead and animate the Y amount. So if we turn that on and move forward a few seconds and let's turn the displacement up. Now it's going out of the frame. We can uh, go ahead and zoom out to see what that's looking like and it's looking good. Now it's moving a little bit too much so we need to move it back down which is easy. We can just keyframe the position and just slide it back down. So as we increase the displacement amount we just need to move its position back down to where it's coming out of. So now if we go back to our main view we can see it jumping out and then we can animate it going back down. And what's great about this is that we're only using about four keyframes for this whole entire animation. So this is great for visualizing things like say you have an engine part or some product that needs to be broken up into pieces so you can see what's inside of it. Uh, this, this will work really well. All right, now we've done all this cool stuff and we haven't even got to the animation engine yet. So let's go and move on to that. But seriously, take a moment to think about everything that you could do. All right, the wait is finally over. Let's take a look at the animation engine. Now, I will tell you, it's not a physics simulator, but what it is, is an intelligent way to animate all of your particles. So let's take a look at a quick example here. All right, so what's happening here is the particles are animating from one group to another group. So the settings in group one are being interpolated into the settings of group two. And that includes the material settings as well. So this has a lot of implications. What we can do is go into each one of these groups and make edits and changes and it will update for the entire animation. So for example, I could go to group one, maybe to the rotation, add some say random rotation Play this back, and there we have it. And maybe for group two, I could turn uh, the size random off and the surface offset off as well. Let's see, turn that up a little bit. And let's see what that looks like. Now, the coolest thing about this is that this entire system is being animated with two keyframes. So there's a percentage from 0 to 100 percent and it's animating everything you see here. And the great thing is you still have full control over everything. So I can come in here and I can change the direction. So I can, you know, move this around and there we go, play the animation back. You know, not really waiting. The resolution's half. If I just solo this and go full screen, this is about how fast it renders. So it's still very, very fast, um, you know, even though it's calculating all of that sort of interpolation. I have a little bit of a glow on it that's actually slowing it down the most. So we can move that around. We can also change the smoothness of the transition. So we can turn it up and make it a little bit softer or we can turn it down and make it, you know, really choppy. We can also turn up some randomness. So watch this. Turn up the randomness and now it looks a little bit different. That's kind of cool. And then there's a bunch of other options like animation types which we'll get into in a moment. And the best part of all, it's really easy to set up. All you have to do is go into your group, change the setting. So for example, let's do a ring and maybe turn the random rotation off. So check this out. You have a ring and it is animating into the other shape. So it doesn't really matter what shape it is, it'll just move into it. Here's another example of the animation engine being used in a little bit different way. We've got some light bulbs raising up and uh, kind of a fun effect. And here's another slightly different one. 
So I've got this large box and I'm gonna go into the scene setup. Now, the thing about this box is that it's pre-fractured. So Element doesn't do any fracturing, but you can do fracturing in 3D Max, Cinema 4D, you could do it in Blender for free. Just open your model up, run the script, export it, and bring it right back in. So check it out, if we go to the wireframe mode, we can see that the entire model is pre-fractured into all of these chunks. Now, usually you want your objects to be on one group, but in this case, I'm gonna put it on group one and group two because I wanna use the animation engine, so I'm gonna hit okay. So if I jump into group two here and move the position around, we can see that we have two of the exact same objects on top of each other. Well, the way the animation engine works is that once it's enabled, it automatically hides one of the groups. So if we turn the animation amount on, move forward a few seconds and turn it up to 100%. It's now interpolating between group one and group two. So let's go up to group two and see what kind of effect we can make. Get ready for this. Turn on the multi object. So now I have control over all of the individual pieces and what I can do is scatter them around. So you can see it's starting to look like it's cracking across the surface. So right there, we've got some really cool possibilities. And we can come down now to the animation engine, play with the settings. So we can turn the smoothness down. And now we have a nice tight fracturing. We can uh, maybe come up here and displace some of the uh, pieces a bit. You know, create a really nice uh, looking bit of destruction. We can even, let's say, watch this, we'll scatter it, rotate it, and let's move the position of the group, say, down. And so what we're going to see now is the pieces, um, if we smooth out the, uh, we're going to see the pieces sort of falling down out of, the, uh, out of the frame. And we can even move that position down really far and almost cheat some type of a uh, you know, gravity, some sort of wall that's crashing down or something like that. So we can see the pieces sort of breaking apart, which is, uh, which is really cool. But we can do something else. So let's turn the scatter amount down. And let's come down to the animation engine. And instead of doing a directional animation, so this is, you know, this is what's happening here is the pieces are falling in sort of a directional pattern. But Let's change it from directional to radial. And look what happens. Let me come up here. We've got ourselves almost like a destroying ground. And remember, this isn't physics. This is simply interpolation. But with a little bit of work and some clever uh, animating, you could do some cool things like dragging this down to kind of fake a bit of gravity even turning up the uh, rotation random so that the ground really starts to crumble. Um, you know, it could look really, uh, really cool. All right, so here's what that might look like with some motion blur. We can even change the radial direction to be inward. And so now the sides will start falling off first. Um, all right, let's take a look at this example using another pre-fractured object. So in this case, we're using a pre-fractured sphere. Now I can show you what that looks like uh, through the wireframe here. Basically just a bunch of uh, pieces in here and it's like higher density down here. Um, now it's animating between the dark ball and the green ball. So what we can do is go to group two and start playing around with the settings. So multi-object, we could turn the displacement amount up and make those pieces really break off a little bit more dramatically. We could even turn the size of the multi-object pieces down to zero, and it almost looks like the pieces are chipping away. Now, I'm noticing a problem. I'm not seeing that bright green anymore, and I really like that. So how can I make my material blend a little bit sooner? Well, what we can do is go to the animation engine. Now, there's not enough time to really get into this, but we have this time delay. And what we can do is take the material duration and change it from 100% to something like 40%. What that will do 
is make it so the material is done blending at 40% instead of 100%. So that way it happens faster. So we can move it over and now look at this animation. Pieces breaking off. We can even slow this animation down. And again, this is all being animated with two keyframes. Maybe turn the uh, motion blur on here. What I'm going to do is I want to turn up that displacement. I want to make these uh, pieces really go flying. And instead of it being so sharp, I'm going to turn up, let's turn the randomness down. And I'm going to turn up the smoothness a little bit. So it'll be faster if you shut the motion blur off. So there's cool. So take a look at this. All right, well, this is pretty amazing. I'm not sure, you know, there's much else to say after uh, after looking at this. You know, there's just so many possibilities. You know, we've got this last example where we can see pieces getting sort of sucked into the middle. And what's cool about this is I'm using the radial mode. So it's pulling the pieces in from the inside, which is, uh, which is really fascinating. Anyways, this is how the element animation system works, and uh, I hope you guys like it. All right, well, we're going to be posting some more in-depth tutorials to the element help section, so those will be available online to um, everyone. And also, we got a little bit of new information on some bundles. So we've got the element plugin. We've got the pro shaders, which are the 200 pre-made materials. And then we've also got the motion design pack, which has a bunch of objects and abstract stuff ready for you to use, including a bunch of pre-fractured objects like glass and things that you can use with the multi-object system. We've got the pro bundle uh, with the pro shaders and then the 3D design bundle, which includes all three of those. So that's great for motion graphics and things. Now we just announced our new 3D model packs and they include anywhere from 40 to 60 models per pack. And if you're looking to get the complete bundle, we have a great discount on that. $4.95 and you're saving $350. So you're pretty much getting every pack for 50 bucks and uh, you know, it's just a really good deal. You know, we've been working on this for, uh, for quite a while and uh, we're really proud and really excited to finally get it out there. So my name is Andrew Kramer and uh, we will see you next time.